Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So today is the disappearance day of Murari Gupta. I wanted to seek the blessings of um, the devotees assembled as well as uh, your good wishes so that we can remember this great soul, a wonderful associate of uh, Lord Chaitanya and get his blessings so that we can continue with uh, our devotion and advance in our devotion. So Murari Gupta was born um, a few years before Lord Chaitanya. He was contemporary of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was born 1486, uh, so near that time, a few years before. He was born in a, a Baidya family in uh, Sailet, Sahet. In, later on, they settled in Naudip, the family, near the house of Jagannath Mishra. He was a disciple of Chandrasekhar Acharya, who we will see at some point in the future. We will uh, look at uh, his wonderful life. And he possessed great uh, humility. He was a lifelong friend of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Gauranga. So they ent when uh, Mahaprabhu entered school, uh, so uh, Murari Gupta was ahead of him. He was more senior. But... Uh, I mean, Nimai was very bright. He became first in the class. He would attain the highest marks. And he loved to argue. And Murari Gupta would ne not engage with him in any sort of argument. Because Nimai would argue with everybody and he would defeat everybody. He was so expert in arguing in grammar and points of philosophy. He was very expert. And Nimai would get angry and he would challenge uh, Murari Gupta. Eventually, um, Murari Gupta did discuss uh, some rhetoric with him, but he still couldn't defeat him. Murari was very, very clever. He was uh, born in a family of physicians, doctors, and he was naturally himself very clever. And he, he was just impossible to defeat uh, this boy. And Murari would often think, is it possible that such a scholar is found in uh, ordinary mortal? He must be some, he must have some kind of divine uh, personage. So, in this way, they would argue, usually be in a friendly mood. One time, he got very heated between them. And there was a scuffle, and he went into the Ganga, and they stirred up so much mud, even the ladies couldn't fill their pots with water, and the Brahmins couldn't bathe. <laughs> so, there was a very amusing story that did take place. And this is a, quite a shocking story, actually how uh, how the Lord can behave in such a way. So, but it's, it's really a transcendental prank and devotees should take it in that light. It's just an extraordinary pastime. One time, Gauranga was playing in the street with his children, with the children, and he was covered in dust from head to toe. Uh, the only way to recognize him was by his golden complexion, <laughs> which shines through even the dirt. <laughs> Children were fighting, enjoying themselves. They didn't care for anything. Then they saw Murari Gupta come. And Guru Murari Gupta was a very serious student. He was a scholar. And he had many admirers around him. And they, he would be guiding them. He would be instructing them. He was so bright. So um, they would look up to the Murari Gupta. And at that time, he was enlightening them about the merits of Gyan Yoga. Gyan Yoga compares to Bhakti Yoga. Gyan Yoga is a much more difficult um, uh, system to understand. Uh, in this age of Kali, we stick to Bhakti Yoga. Gyan Yoga is very difficult. But he was explaining this Gyan Yoga to um, his, uh, his colleagues around him. And he was explaining in a very animated way. When Nimai saw him, he would follow Murari Gupta and he would try to put him off. Uh, he would say, um, um, there goes the great future doctor of Nadia. Come on, let's have some fun. They started mimicking, mimicking Murari Gupta. And whenever Murari Gupta would wave his hands to make a point, Nimai would do the same. In this way, they made a, a laughing stock of Murari. Everybody was laughing. Even Murari's own friends were laughing at him. So then this devotee called Lochandas Thakur, he's written in the Chaitanya Mangal, what happened next. 
I'm not going to read the Bengali. I would like to, but uh, time is not uh, with us today. We want to move along quickly. And also Bengali is very sweet. I'll probably make a mess of it anyway. Murali could not ignore Nimai anymore. Although he was generally of a peaceful temperament, the son of his auntie Sachi, the Sachi Mata, had crossed all limits of decency. Murali lost his temper and he blurted out, this son of uh, Purandar Mishra is a trouble to everyone. Who has ever spoken nicely about him? This is uh, Nimai he's talking about. Wherever he go, you go, uh, wherever you go, you hear his glory in a sarcastic way, that he's a naughty boy. Moreover, what name have they kept for him? Nimai, pa. <laughs> so in this way, he was um, a little bit taking the mickey, ridiculing, ridiculing uh, Nimai. <laughs> Gauranga became angry. And when he, when he heard Murari speak in this way, of course, the Lord doesn't get angry with his devotees, but this is all part of his uh, leela, his pastimes. And Nimai shouted, I will show you for all of your so-called oratory skills. Just you wait until lunch, lunchtime, Murari. I will teach you such a lesson you will not forget. Murari felt uneasy. Uh, in his mind, because he knew uh, this uh, Nimai was very mischievous and he was always doing some naughty pranks and God knows what he's going to do to me. Anyway, Murali went home, he forgot uh, Nimai's threat, he became busy with his duties. In the meantime, uh, Gauranga dressed up nicely and he came to Murali, Murali's house. And he's described, he had a beautiful belt around his waist, he wore two uh, um, strings of pearls around his neck. His hair was tied in a high top knot, top knot mm -hmm. on his head. His beautiful large eyes were filled with coal. Mm -hmm. This that's the black thing in the anjan. Golden ornaments uh, uh, shone on his body. Uh, he wore stylish sandals on his rosy feet and held ladus of condensed milk in his hands. <laughs> Murai was eating his lunch in the inner room of his house when he suddenly heard someone calling out his name with a deep, with a voice as deep as rumbling clouds. Murari, Murari. Murari sat upright as if a thunderbolt had struck him. He immediately remembered what happened in the morning. Had Nimai really come to teach him a lesson? Had he been serious when he made that threat? Murari could not believe it. Gauranga was at Murari's doorstep. His beautiful golden form shone as he stood in the threshold. He said with a smile, Murali, what are you doing? It's all right, don't worry. I'm standing here. You eat peacefully. Murari heaved a, high, a, 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 a sigh of relief and continued to eat. Then can you imagine what Nimai did? Calmly, he walked right up to Murari Gupta and his plate of food. And does anybody know what he did as a matter of interest? <laughs> he ate with him. <laughs> uh, good, good, good guess. <laughs> no. <laughs> you got to be shocked, Alil. So uh, hold your constraint, uh, constrain yourself, okay, when you hear this. Okay. You're all ready. <laughs> yeah. You're all ready. We'll do the Bengal. He urinated all over his plate. <laughs> this is the supreme personality of Godhead. Murali I knew it. I knew it. I didn't want to tell it though. <laughs> so your culture. Is, is he is as Murari Gupta? Is he an incarnation of Hanumanji? That's same. Yes. Same, same. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Murari Gupta was totally dumbfounded. He immediately stood up and he was kiki boli chi chi koli. He was like, what is this? He was crying in this uh, disbelief. Chi chi. Disgusting, disgusting. <laughs> and there you go. There's the proof. <laughs> we had our local boat photographer at hand at that time. We took a picture of what happened. <laughs> shocking, shocking. This is the Lord, the Supreme Lord behaving in such an amazing way. Okay, so what happened next? Nimai, however, he clapped his hands in glee um, and he spoke the following words. He said, you dare 
to discard the path of bhakti and propound the glories of Gyan Yog. And look at you, how you move your head and hands as if you're a great pandit, when actually you're the biggest fool. The Lord then commanded Murari, abandon all parts of Gyan and Karma Yog. Simply immerse yourself in Sri Krishna Bachan. Krishna is the supreme connoisseur of Ras. He's expert in all the arts, the fountainhead of all charm, eternally blissful. So this was an incredible shock to Murari because so far Chaitanya Mahaprabhu never displayed openly this uh, mood of bhakti because he was acting as a, a scholar and a debater and he would fight on the, uh, in terms of arguing and win all the arguments. So Murari was always, and he was, Murari was a bhakta, but also he had this inclination toward Gyan Yog. And when Murari heard this, he was absolutely static. Nimai then left calmly and returned home after revealing this essence of Prema Bhakti to his eternal associate. Murari Gupta's hair stood on end. He was astounded. He thought, who is this boy? who speaks with such commanding authority, is Sachi Mata's son, none other than Krishna himself. Otherwise, how could he speak such profound philosophy at such a young age? Murari rushed to Nimai's house, filled with ecstasy. So he just weed on his food, right? Pushadam. But Murari was not upset because Krishna actually Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the form of Krishna, I uh, sorry, Krishna in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, instructed Murari in the highest level of philosophy. So um, he was further amazed to see Sachi Mata and Jagannath Mishra having a tug of war over who would Nimai, who would have Nimai on his on their lap. They were both tugging at Nimai and kissing his cheeks. Murari then ran to Advaita Prabhu, Advaita Charya, and narrated everything to him. Lord Advaita was ecstatic. His eyes brimmed with tears and he roared in joy. He called out, has the Supreme Being finally answered my fervent play prayers? Has the day of deliverance arrived? He held Murari in a tight embrace. So the explanation of this pastime, Murari, Gupta was a devotee, but mixing all sorts of other philosophies with pure devotion. Philosophies that are contrary to pure devotion is like putting urine on Prashad. Of course, Lord Chaitanya's urine is Prashad itself. God can never, nothing can, wrong can come from God. Everything is beautiful. Even his urine is uh, perfect, pure, Prashad. Nimai was dancing and said, I told you, I will teach you a lesson. I taught you everything today. And Murari Gupta, he was so philosophical. He figured out instantly, Nimai actually just liberated him from all misconceptions and gave him a completely pure, exclusive understanding of what a static love of God really is. This was the effect of passing you in that day. <laughs> so this is why this story is so beautiful. Anyway, I hope Dior is not too shocked. <laughs> Transcendental pastime. When uh, Mahaprabhu returned from Gaya and began to manifest symptoms of static love, Murari Gupta became instantly devoted to him. When he saw Mahaprabhu crying in the static love of, uh, at the house of uh, Suklambar Pandit, he became struck with wonder. Now, there was this time when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed his true form to different devotees, whatever devotees wanted to see or had as their ish dev, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would reveal that. So this is called the Mahaprakash. He did it at the house of uh, Shunivas Acharya. And at that time, he called Murari. And he told Murari, can't you recognize who I am, who I really am? Just see my divine form. Then Murari saw Mahaprabhu as his adored Lord, Sri Raghunath, Ramachandra, sitting in the, on the Vyasasan, his legs folded beneath his body and holding a great bow in his hand with Lakshman and Janaki seated on either side of him. Then when he saw himself amongst 
when when Murari saw him, uh, himself amongst the monkeys in his original form, he fainted. Gauranga called him, Murari, get up. Just see my divine form. Have you forgotten who set Ravan's Lanka on fire? It was you, Hanuman. Get up and gaze on this form of Lakshman, who is the very embodiment of your life. Offer your obeisances to that one for whose sadness you cried so much, Sita. <laughs> so this was a wonderful pastime. Gauranga then once tested Murari Gupta's attachment to Lord Ram. He would preach to him, Murali, worship Krishna and take shelter of him. Nothing but his service can satisfy the mind and the heart. So he told him to give up Ramachandra's bhakti. And that devastated Murari. He was shocked. Um, and that night he could not sleep. He actually prayed to Ram. I can't give you up. Just let me leave my body now. I can't stop serving you. I can't stop loving you. <laughs> and at the same time, he knew he loved Chaitanya. So whatever Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would say, he would do. So he would be, he can't follow Mahaprabhu's instructions. So he might as well give up his life. Murari went to Chaitanya in the morning after crying all night. What should I do? I've sold my heart to the lotus feet of Ramachandra. But if I disobey your order to worship Krishna, then I'm also making an offense. What can I do? <laughs> Smiling, Gauranga replied, Oh, glories to you, Murari. You're so fixed in your worship that even my request couldn't change your mind. This is exactly the type of single-minded devotion, love and devotion. The Bhakta must have the lotus feet of their chosen Isht, Isht Dev. Even the Lord wanted separation. A devotee cannot abandon the shelter of his lotus feet. Just to test your firm faith in the Lord, in your Lord, I repeatedly asked you to change your worship from Ram to Krishna. Showering his mercy on Murari Gupta, the Lord continued, you are the incarnation of Hanuman, the eternal servant of Lord Ram. Therefore, you cannot give up your worship of Ram. <laughs> One time, Murari, uh, sorry, Chitai Mahaprabhu came to his house in the mood of Varaha. <laughs> I believe he even knocked down the door when he came. And he was roaring down the street. <laughs> um, he picked up a water pot in his teeth while Murari Gupta fell on the floor to offer his dandavats, being uh, dumbstruck with wonder at having seen this divine form. Then Gauranga, Gauranga asked Murari, just sing some hymn in my praise. And then uh, Murari recited some wonderful slok and he addressed him and then the Lord uh, calmed down and he became very happy and addressed him. Murari, I'm just speaking the truth to you. I am the essence of all scriptures. I have come to engage in Harinam Sankirtan myself, as well as to induce others to chant my holy names. I cannot tolerate malice towards my devotee. If somebody tries to harm my devotee, even if he is my son, I will tear off his head. <laughs> The proof of his, this is Narakasura. So, Mapu would reveal many secrets to Murari. They were very close uh, companions. One evening, Mahaprabhu and Nityananda were sitting in the courtyard of Srivas Pandit. And Murari Gupta came there. He, faced, he first pays the obeisances to Mahaprabhu and then Nityananda. And Mahaprabhu said to him, Murari, you've made a mistake. You offered your obeisances in the opposite order. Murari said, Prabhu, as you have inspired, so I have done. All right, Gauranga said, go home now. And later you will be able to understand everything. So that night he had a dream. He saw the chief of the Mahabhagavat, Nityananda, his cloth tied up behind in a fashion of a wrestler proceeding in front. His head was a great many, above his head was a many headed serpent. In his hands was a plow and a club. Nityananda Prabhu appeared as this is Balaram, following behind with a peacock feather on his head was Sri Vishwambar, Lord Chaitanya. So Nityananda is none other than Haladhar and manifestation of Ananta Dev and the greatest devotee. Now Murari could understand who is greater. So Mahaprabhu, uh, smiling uh, sweetly, called him, Murari, now have you understood? If you have breached proper conduct, then how will it look? <laughs> Murari Gupta, in the depth of his dream, began to call out, Nityananda, Nityananda, and with tears in his eyes. His wife, 
then called out Krishna, Krishna and woke him up. Murari could understand the greatness of Nityananda's position now. It is he who revealed Gauranga, who reveals Gauranga. Without his mercy, one cannot get the mercy of Chaitanya. That's a great lesson for us. Like we read in the pastime of Krishna Das Kaviraj, we should not neglect Nityananda. Nityananda and Chaitanya to, to, together. They're two rail tracks, they're together. On uh, another day, Murari Gupta came to Shiva's courtyard and he saw Mahaprabhu seated very regally on a decorated seating place served by many devotees. Gadadhar was, Gadadhar Pandit, uh, incarnation Radha, was offering pan and betel nut, and um, which Mahaprabhu was chewing. And he gave that, his remnants of his chewed betel nut to Murari. And Murari was really happy, he put it in his mouth. And then Mahaprabhu teased him, said, my awful, my, um, my waist yeah, has touched your body. <laughs> And uh, Murari said, no, my body has now completely become purified. The prashad of the Lord is completely non-material, like his urine, <laughs> his self, his name, his prashad, all non-different. If anyone thinks that his prashad has become awful, uh, bad, by being in contact with his mouth, then this is great apparat. The mouths of ordinary human beings are considered unclean, but this doesn't apply to the supremely pure personality of Godhead. Having received the uh, Prashad of Mahaprabhu, Murari, he became intoxicated. He went home. His wife could understand what had happened. She put a seat for him to eat something. She brought the Prashad. But what Murari did, he made uh, bowls of rice, rice and sugar, I think it was, or ghee. And he would put it on the ground and he would say, eat, eat, eat. And his wife could understand exactly what he was doing. The ladies are always more smarter. <laughs> So he, she requested her husband that that is enough. Don't give him any more. Now you've eaten. Now you eat something. <laughs> so then he ate something. He took rest. Early morning, Mahaprabhu came to his house and said to him, oh, I've got indigestion and it's your fault, Murari. Give me, you're a physician. Give me something to take care of this indigestion. And Murari was really surprised. And Mahaprabhu said to him, Murari, you've forgotten already last night. All the while saying, eat, eat, you fed me so much rice with ghee. <laughs> if you offer me, how can I refuse? But eating rice with so much ghee, I've got indigestion. Now give me some medicine. <laughs> so this is a wonderful, wonderful pastime. So this shows how the Lord does accept the offerings of his pure devotees. Uh, okay. The Lord is Bhaktavatsal, who is very affectionate to his devotees. He accepts foodstuffs in the house of his devotee and submissive, is submissive to their love for him. He is happy to remain in whatever condition they keep him, wherever they feed him. He accepts very happily. Whatever they like, he likes. <laughs> this is the Lord. When we invite him to our home, he becomes part of our family. In this way, the Lord enacted so many pastimes with his dear devotee, Hanuman, Murari. One day, Murari Gupta began to reflect, if I leave my body in the presence of the Lord, that would be really good. So he made a dagger and he hid it in his house. But Mahaprabhu, who knows everything about everyone, immediately came to his home and said, Murari, I have so many pastimes to complete in your company. If you go away, how will I go on? I know everything. <laughs> so Murari then got hold of the Lord's feet and began to cry. Thereafter, Mahaprabhu consoled him and explained to him many things after, afterwards he returned back to his own home. So he was present many of the pastimes. When Mahaprabhu took in sannyas in Katva, Murari would cry and cry and cry. They would visit him in Jagannath Puri every year and his wife would make so many delicious things for Gauranga. He was born in a family of physicians. He himself practiced medicine. But his practice was unique in that he cured uh, his patients' physical ail ailments and also freed them from the disease of material existence. This is the beauty of Murari. He wrote the first biography of Mahaprabhu. Uh, it's called Chaitanya Charita Mahabhakya Kavya. This is his place. Uh, there's now a Godiamat there where he used to live. 
they've preserved his memory, which is really, really nice. Murari Gupta Ki Jai. Thank you so much, dear devotees. So I wanted to swiftly move on to Sharad Punima. The plan is we'll briefly describe the pastime of Sharad Punima, what it's all about, different parts of India uh, in Bharat. And then um, we'll come to the main aspect of Sharad Punima, which is the Ras Gila. And then there is within that pastime where the gopis sing uh, Gopi Git, which uh, we're very fortunate. Uh, one of our wonderful devotees, Karuna Bandar, has uh, learned this bhajan. Uh, this uh, is from the Bhagavatam, 19 sloks. So we wanted to sing that and also read the English. So it'll take a little time. Um, so I'd, I'd say we probably finish about five. Uh, and then we wanted to do the Damodar Aarti as well. Mm. So today's a little bit extended. Hope the devotees don't mind. So what's the significance, significance of this day? Sharad Purnima. Purnima means full moon. And um, Sharad is indication that the autumn season has arrived. So up to now, it's been really hot in the day and night. And now the nights get cooler. The hot, day is still hot, but not as hot as the summer. And in different parts of the country, different festivals are held. In Bengal, they would worship Lakshmi. In Gujarat, they would do uh, pray for a good harvest. In Also in um, Rajasthan and UP, in the south, they have different festivals. They have festival of uh, appearance of um, uh, Kartikeya. So a little different in different parts of the country. This time, Goddess Lakshmi uh, on this day descends to earth and showers bless blessings of prosperity and wealth. So Lakshmi Puja is done. And whoever stays up all night, they will get her blessings. Of course, we want the blessings of Narayan, Vishnu, because wherever Vishnu is, Lakshmi always resides. <laughs> and this day, the moon is said to be the closest to earth, and it's said to have healing powers. And um, there's a tradition that Kiri is offered to the Lord and to the gopis. Um, so this made from rice and uh, milk, uh, and it's left out uh, all night. Um, and moonbeams are supposed to make this key very potent. And of course, being Prashad of Krishna and the gopis is potent anyway, but it's good for the body. <laughs> the reason for that is key, having key on the day of Sharad Purnima is widely appreciated as it is regarded that the light of the moon uh, uh, drips nectar, which contains va varied kinds of healing properties. So people prepare uh, rich kheer and leave it in the moonlight for the whole night. And the next day, the same energized kheer is distributed to all the family members as Pashad. So devotees may want to do that. Of course, in Vrindavan, this is an extraordinarily special day. It's to, it's where Krishna reciprocated with his gopis and performed the Ras Leela. The Ras Leela is the highest, Pope had said, highest reciprocation of love that takes place in the spiritual world between Krishna and his most beloved uh, associates of Vrindavan, the gopis. However, we must understand these pastimes are very confidential. The Acharya's heart breaks when they see this most spiritual activity taken as lusty activities by materialistic people. So if we take these uh, divine activities of Krishna and the gopis, and we see it with the eyes of a material person, materialistic person, we will see simply one boy and girl enjoying. And then that mood will uh, transfer into our own activities. But actually these are the most sublime activities, not to be misunderstood. And these pastimes are given in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. And it's said that one should read the first nine cantos so that one can understand the 10th canto and understand that this is not an ordinary activity. Sukadeva Goswami, who was on the topmost level of renunciation, considered the Ras dance the utmost expression of divinity. He was so renounced, he didn't even wear clothes. What to speak of any sense enjoyment at all. So he's very qualified to understand what the meaning of Ras Leela is. Raghunath Das, Sanatan, Jiva Goswamis, they praise and worship the Ras Leela of Krishna in their books. 
Raghunath Das, although very wealthy, with a very beautiful wife, left it all behind like a man leaves stool behind. So these, these are the most amazing devotees. And they are very concerned that these Ras Leela activities are not misunderstood. So we have to be a little careful um, uh, when we are uh, reading these pastimes or hearing these pastimes. It need to be heard from the right source. On the path of bhakti, how much we have surrendered to that degree, we can comprehend and realize Krishna's pastimes. By hearing Krishna's pastime purely, everyone gets purified. But they have to be heard from the right source with the right training. Mahaprabhu set the standard of not discussing intricate pastimes with the general public, but only with the most confidential disciples, associates like Swarup Dhamuda. So we'll talk about these pastimes, but uh, it'll obviously our understanding is not great. Um, but we're just going to repeat what is in the Krishna book, which Prabhupada has given us and given us permission to read as well. There were sweet breezes carrying, carried out, carried over the Yamuna of Malati, Jasmine, Malika flowers. Vindal Devi and Yogamaya had arranged by their personal love every possible beautiful feature to, to, okay. to increase the pleasure of Krishna and his devotees. Yeah, go on. Okay. So Krishna wanted to give the utmost ecstasy to his devotees on this night. So he went to the shore of the Yamuna at Vamsivat and played the fifth note on his flute. This fifth note is actually for the gopis only. Um, so when they hear this, they just go mad and leave everything. So the sound was actually the love emanating from Krishna's heart. So this is a pictorial form of uh, the gopis actually were hearing that fifth note. So when Krishna called so when Krishna called the gopis were sounding his flute, they very hurriedly rushed towards the spot of the Ras dance with the transcendental desire to set it as Krishna, leaving their respective engagements like milking cows, um, um, boiling the milk, breastfeeding the small babies, distributing food <laughs> to the members of the families. The faces were decorated hurriedly and were haphazardly finished. Some even put the lower part of their clothes on the upper part for their bodies and the upper part and the lower part. So base lesson we, we can learn from this is when Krishna calls us, we just leave everything and run. <laughs> we can see Krishna, he's, he's just there playing his flute. And it said that, um, you know, even their makeup, some of them were in the middle of doing their makeup, they would just <laughs> leave it. And the clothes, it was, you know, it wasn't by on purpose that they were wearing the upper on the lower and the lower on the upper. It was because they were so anxious to become to go to Krishna. To go to Krishna. So, so the gopis came to Krishna, who was standing on a banyan tree, hoping that Krishna would accept them. Krishna told them it was nice that it come, but why had they come? I mean, he knew, ex you know, exactly, who, but he was just teasing them. So he's saying, "Oh, ladies of Vrindavan." You're very dear to me. I'm very pleased that you've come here. What can I do for you? <laughs> what is the purpose of coming here in the dead of night? Kindly take your seats and let me know what I can do for you. So the gopi said, Krishna, you're very cruel. You should not talk like that. We are full-fledged, surrendered souls. Please accept us. Of course, you're the supreme person after God and can do whatever you like. So the lesson to learn from this particular pastime is, we can pray with our heart, but and the Lord will accept our prayers. Um, just like you know, the gopis just were praying, you know, and you know, didn't really uh, care about anything else. So you can just imagine the scenario, isn't it? <laughs> he's playing the flute, they're running to him, they come to him, and he's saying, uh, What are you guys doing here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah in the middle of the night, you shouldn't be here all, all alone. <laughs> Okay, so, so he told them to go back home. And the gopis' hearts were struck with sharp arrows when they heard Krishna's words. They stood drawing patterns in the sand with their toes. Their eyes welled up with tears. They couldn't even you know, look at Krishna at that time. So they told Krishna that they had left everything to please him and that he had stolen the hearts. Uh, so basically, they were just fulfilling their duties as Krishna was in everyone's heart. So all their love was exclusively for him. 
So the gopis are the topmost acharyas teaching by the example that the topmost instruction of abandoning all varieties of religion and surrender onto Krishna from the Bhagavad Gita is what they're practicing. You know, Krishna says, surrender and become my devotee, offer all homage to him, and in this way you will go back to him. So that is exactly what, you know, they were doing by, by this act. Mm -hmm. So Krishna being pleased with the gopis went with them and walked through the forest with them. They came to the bank of the Yamuna, and each gopi was thinking that Krishna was only with them. So at this point, Krishna had actually um, uh, um, yeah. So yeah, so at this point, Krishna had actually uh, um, um, made several forms of himself. So each gopi thought that only Krishna was with them. With them. So uh, this is the power of Krishna. His power to love is perfect and complete. And Krishna can satisfy everyone to the heart's desire. So whatever the gopis was desiring at that time, you know, Krishna was fulfilling that. So although Krishna is the supreme person that we've got it, and thus had no desire that needs to be fulfilled, because he's always full of the six opulences. It's called Atmaram. So but he wanted to fulfill the desires of the gopis but he also wanted to enjoy the company of the gopis in the Ras dance. So the Ras dance and Lord Krishna's association with the gopis appear like ordinary mixing of young boys and girls. The dancing of young boys and girls within the material world is in the kingdom of Mahamaya or the external energy. Mm -hmm. The Ras dance of Krishna, the gopis is not a platform for Yogmaya. Difference is that on the Mahamaya platform, dances take place on the basis of sense gratification of lust Whereas the gopis interaction with Krishna is on the spiritual platform of love. The lesson to learn from this is the persons of Krishna are completely spiritual and that is how we should really view them. Yeah, there's no tinge of any material no lust, lust yeah. or, or goodness, passion, ignorance. Mm -hmm. It's just completely spiritual. He's Atma Rama. He doesn't need any, he's, he's got nothing, he's self-satisfied. He doesn't need anything or anyone. However, he still uh, wants to give pleasure to the devotees and also enjoy with them. So each gopi was thinking that she was the most fortunate person in the world because Krishna was only with her. Krishna sensed this pride and it disappeared. This pride was not really their pride. They were proud uh, of Krishna. They were proud that Krishna was so merciful. Krishna wanted to teach the world that any devotee who has false pride, he abandons them. Krishna does not tolerate false pride. Exactly. Humility actually attracts Krishna, which we can learn from uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings with Trinata Pisuni Jaina. So the gopis, however, soon began to feel very proud, thinking themselves to be the most fortunate women in the universe due to being favored yeah. by the company of Krishna. Lord Krishna is known as Keshav, could immediately understand that pride caused by the great fortune of enjoying him personally. In order to show them his causes mercy, he immediately disappeared from this scene, exhibiting his opulence of renunciation. The lesson to be learned from this is we should be careful that we not also become proud. Of course, the gopis are very special personalities, and this is all part of the leela between them and Krishna. Indeed, this is very, very important part. This pride, like Prabhupada says, is they were actually proud of Krishna. Mm. And the fact that they were also with him, it was uh, just natural that they became very, very happy. But Krishna, he's, he wanted to intensify their love for mm. him. So that was the real the reason, reason why he disappeared. He disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, hang on, that's already done. Yeah. Yeah, there. Oh, I've done that. So when, when Krishna disappeared, the gopis became mad in ecstasy looking for him. They looked everywhere. They asked the trees, the birds, the creepers, and even Tulsi Devi for that seen Krishna. They begged Mother Earth that she was so fortunate that Krishna's lotus footprints always on her to tell them where Krishna had gone. 
So this is, so this is what they're saying. Krishna has disappeared because of our pride. The gopis are aware of the reason for Krishna's sudden disappearance. They could understand that when they'd been enjoying Krishna, they thought themselves to be the most fortunate women within the universe. And since they were feeling proud, Krishna disappeared to curb their pride. So you can see from this picture, you know, the, the uh, gopis are lamenting, uh, you know, talking to trees, hugging the trees. And Krishna is just watching from a distance. So it's important to understand when we have, have made a mistake to try and correct the mistake. And uh, this is the gopis, you know, they, they know that, you know, they were proud and they really, that's how, why Krishna is trying to teach them something. The gopis began to search from everywhere. So after not finding him anywhere, they became afraid and almost mad after, after him. They were simply thinking of the pastimes of Krishna in great love and affection. The gopis therefore began to question the trees and plants about Krishna. There were various types of big trees and small plants in the forest and the gopis addressed them. Dear Banyan tree, have you seen the son of Maharaj Nan passing this way, laughing and playing on his flute? He has stolen the hearts and gone away. If you've seen him, kindly inform us which way he's gone. Dear Ashoka tree, dear Nag flower tree and Champaka flower tree, have you seen the younger brother of Balaram pass this way? So the lessons, we also have to search for Krishna with all our hearts. This is also uh, a sign of madness. <laughs> <laughs> when you start talking to the trees and the flowers, but of course, in the case of uh, the gopis, this is transcendental madness. This is one of the symptoms of love of God. Mm that you are always seeking out, where, like Parikshit Maharaj, whoever he'd meet, he would analyze, is this God? Is this the person I saw in, my, in the womb of my mother? So these are natural devotees who um, miss the association of Krishna. And they're always seeking him out. And this is something that we have to sort of try to learn as well. Where is Krishna? Where is the Lord? Am I am I in the right direction finding to find the Lord? Constantly just reassessing ourselves. Am I going in the right direction? Being absorbed in thought of him, they experienced loss of memory and we dampened eyes, they began to see the very past of the Krishna. Being so attracted to Krishna, they imitated his dancing, his walking, his smiling, as if they themselves are Krishna. Due to Krishna's absence, they all became crazy. Each one of them told the others that she was Krishna himself. So yeah, they would enact pastimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So they all assembled together and chanted Krishna's name very loudly as they moved from one part of the forest to another searching for him. <laughs> Finally, the gopis returned to the bank of the Yamuna and assembled there. And expecting that Krishna must return to them, they simply engaged in chanting glories of Sri Krishna. They were so much engrossed in separation that they started enacting Krishna's pastimes. This was their absorption in Krishna consciousness. We should be completely absorbed in satisfying Krishna, whatever service we are engaged in, and things should not be done mechanically. So as there was, uh, sorry, before they uh, went back to the Yamuna, um, they, were, they were deep in the forest and uh, it was so dark that even the moon, moonbeam could not, could not enter the forest. So this time they saw Krishna's footprints and this gave them hope. Then they saw two sets of footprints. So they realized that, that uh, Srimati Radharani was with Krishna this time because she loves Krishna the most and that is why Krishna left them. They finally saw Srimati Radharani sitting alone. So Krishna had also left her eyes. She'd also become proud because at this point Radharani was also thinking, I'm the most fortunate uh, person in this world. And Krishna's, you know, come only to me. So they could not see anything. So they came back to the bank of the Yamuna and simply cried. There they began to sing the glories of Krishna. This is called the Gopi Gita, which are beautiful prayers of intense separation. And these prayers have been meditated upon by great devotees. Uh, so this is the Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto. Uh, 31st 31st chapter. Chapter first verse to nineteenth, and this is the actual Gopi Gita. Okay. 
Yeah. So um, this time it's, it might be appropriate to actually for Karuna to sing the Gopi Git. Are you able to, Karuna? Yes, Prabhu. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. So. Jayati ki githam Janmana braja Shrayata indira Shashwada trahi Dayati drishyata
प्रणतदेहीनाशनमचरागम श्रीनिकेतन फनिफनाबुज क्रीनुकुचेशय मधुरया गिरा वर्गुवाख्या बुध मनोषया पुष्क विधि करे तव कथात तीवन कविरीदित कलमशापम श्रवण मंगल श्रीमदात भुवि गृणंती प्रहसित प्रेम वीक्षण विहरण चानम रहसिदो कुहकनो मना क्षोभयी चलसीय चारय पशु नलिन सुंदर पदम शील त्रीनाकूसीदीना कालता दीन परीक्ष नीलकुंतल वन रुहान बीभदारित घनरजस्वल दर्शयन मनसी न स्वर वीरयचसी प्रणत कामद पद्मचित धरणी मंदन चरण पंकज शतम चके 
I'm so proud of you. My goodness. Amazing. Um, and you only did this this morning, right? <laughs> yes, Prabhu. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well done. That was spectacular. I never thought in my life that we would be actually doing something like this. So, Me neither, Prabhu. I never thought I would be able to sing it. 
Yeah, wow, that was amazing. And how did you learn it? Just uh... Uh, I, I got the tune uh, from YouTube. Shivram Das Prabhu yeah. uh, sang the, the Gobi Ki. You, 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 oh, not Shivram Maharaj. No, Shri, Shri Ram Das. Oh, Shri Ram Das. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. now, thank you very much. Thank you for clarifying that. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. Amazing, actually. Sure. I hope the audience enjoyed that. That was uh, actually the heartfelt songs, the uh, Geet of the Gopis. Of the Gopis. Mm -hmm. They were in great, great separation. And it's recommended that on this day, especially Sharad Purnima, which is when they sung it, that we should also recite this to invoke uh, some blessings of the gopis. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to ask uh, devotees to, uh, if um, anybody would like to read the translation of this from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Yes, please. Okay. Maybe you can do uh, the first seven and then Janaki, you would like to do the next lot and then maybe Uddhav do the next lot? There's three lots. Yeah. I can do that. <laughs> okay. So uh, go for it, Kamakshi. Okay. Thank you. Gopi Geet Ki Jai, Prabhupada Ki Jai, Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. Text one. The gopis said, Oh, beloved, your birth in the land of Braj has made, made it exceedingly glorious. And thus, Indra, the goddess of fortune, always reside here. It is only for your sake that we, your devoted servants, maintain our lives. We have been searching everywhere for you, so please show yourself to us. Text two. O Lord of love, in beauty, your glance excels the whole world okay. of the finest, most perfectly formed lotus within the autumn pond. Or, or bestower of benedictions, you are killing the maidservants who have given themselves to you freely without any price. Isn't this murder? <laughs> <laughs> oh, greatest of personalities, you have repeatedly saved us from all kind of danger, from poison water, from the terrible man eater Aga, from the great rains, from the wild demon, from the fiery thunderbolt of Indra, from the bull demon, and from the son of Maya Danva. Text four. You are not actually the son of the gopis, Gopi Yashoda, or friend, but rather the in, indwelling witness in the hearts of all embodied souls, because Lord Brahma prayed for you to come and protect the universe, you are, you have now appeared in the <coughs> Satyavat dynasty. Text five, oh best of the Varnesh, you, your lotus-like hand, which holds the hand of the goddess of fortune, grants fearlessness to those who approach your feet out of fear of material existence. O oh, lover of, O oh, lover, oh, please place that wish fulfilling a lotus hand on our heads. Text six, O oh, you who destroyed the suffering of Braj people, O oh, hero of all women, your smile shatters the false pride of your, of your devotees. Please, dear friend, accept us as your maidservants and show us your beautiful lotus face. Text seven. Your lotus feet destroy the past sins of all embodied souls who surrender to them. Those feet follow, sorry, after the cows in the pastures and are eternal abode of the goddess of fortune. Since you once put those feet on the hoods of great serpent Kalia, please place them upon our breasts and tear, our, tear away the lust in our hearts. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, Janaki, would you like to read? Hi, Bob. Hare Krishna. 
Oh, lotus-eyed one, your sweet voice and charming words, which attract the minds of the intelligent, are bewildering us more and more. Oh, dear hero, please revive your maidservants with the nectar of your lips. The nectar of your words and the descriptions of your activities are the life and souls of those suffering in this material world. These narrations transmitted by learned sages eradicate one's sinful reactions and bestow good fortune upon those who hear them. These narrations are broadcast all over the world and are filled with spiritual power. Certainly those who spread the message of Godhead are the most municipal, municipal, your smile, your, your smiles, your sweet loving glances, the intimate pastimes and confidential talks we enjoyed with you. All these are auspicious to meditate upon and they touch our hearts. But at the same time, O oh deceiver, hmm. they very much agitate our minds. Dear master, dear lover, when you leave the coward village to herd the cows, our minds are disturbed by the thought that your feet, more beautiful than a lotus, will be pricked by the spiked husks, husks of grain and the rough grass and plants. At the end of the day, you repeatedly show us your lotus face, covered with dark blue locks of hair and thickly powdered with dust. Thus, O oh hero, you arouse lusty desires in our minds. Your lotus feet, which are worshipped by Lord Brahma, fulfill the desires of all those who bow, to, bow, bow down to them. They are the ornament of the earth. They give the highest satisfaction, and in times of danger, they are the appropriate object of meditation. O oh lover, O oh destroyer of, of anxiety, please put these lotus feet upon our breasts. Wow, thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Uddhav, are you able to read? Ah, God. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Uddhav. O oh, hero, kindly distribute to us the nectar of your lips, which enhances conjugal pleasure and vanquishes grief. That nectar is thoroughly relished by your vibrating flute and makes people forget any other attachment. When you go off to the forest during the day, a tiny fraction of a second becomes like a millennium for us because we cannot see you. And even when we can eagerly look upon your beautiful face, so lovely with its adornment of curly locks, our pleasure is hindered by our eyelids, which were fashioned by the foolish creator. <laughs> Dear Achyuta, <clears throat> you know very well why we have come here. Who but a cheater like you would abandon young women who come to see him in the middle of the night, enchanted by the loud song of his flute? Just to see you, we have completely rejected our husbands, children, ancestors, brothers, and other relatives. Our minds are repeatedly bewildered as we think of the intimate conversations we had with you in secret. Feel the rise of lust in our hearts and remember your smiling face your loving glances and your broad chest, the resting place of the goddess of fortune. Thus we experience the most severe hankering for you. O oh, beloved, your all auspicious appearance vanquishes the distress of those living in Vraja's forests. Our minds long for your association. Please give to us just a bit of that medicine, which counteracts the disease in your devotees' hearts. O oh, dearly beloved, your lotus feet are so soft that we place them gently on our breasts, fearing that your feet will be hurt. Our life rests only in you. Our minds, therefore, are filled with... I can't see the last line, probably. Anxiety that your tender feet might be wounded by pebbles as you roam around on the forest. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Udav. Thank you. Gopi Geet Ki Jai. It's amazing. Uh, just go, go, back. go back again. So, amazing prayers. You look at this. They're even giving a, a Lord Brahma a hard time uh, for creating eyelids. Um, and even a tiny fraction of a second away from Krishna when he's in the forest seems like millenniums to them. These are devotees of the highest, highest order. And actually it said, if one wants to achieve um, Vraj, Vrindavan, 
then we have to actually follow in the footsteps of these devotees. And um, although they've been treated very cruelly by him, look at their approach in text 19. Your lotus feet are so soft. They're so soft. We want you to just be always protected. They're so tender. We don't want them wounded by pebbles as you roam on the forest. This is the supreme person. And they, uh, they understand what his situation is. But yet they have such intimate love for him. So such amazing uh, Gopi Geet. We should try to recite this more often if we can. Okay, okay so after hearing this Gopi Geet, Krishna became very pleased and appeared before them. He had a garland of forest flowers and a yellow dhoti. He reciprocated the gopis' desires and satisfied them. So Lord Krishna finally appeared among the assembled gopis. He looked very beautiful, just befitting a person all kinds of opulence. He showed special favor to the gopis who are the selected beauties of all creation. It is impossible to repay you. This is Krishna saying. Uh, so he's, he's saying to the gopis, impossible to repay you or show enough gratitude for your love. Therefore, please be satisfied by your own pious activities. So because they don't want anything in return, apart from his uh, being happy, he can't repay them. The gopis asked Krishna why he'd left them and how much they had been hurt. Krishna explained that he'd left them as he was their true well-wisher and he wanted to intensify their loving devotion for him. He's willing to do anything for them. The gopis had real love for Krishna, as did not, did not expect anything in return. Uh, he, 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 by this, he, he shows that he never abandons a sincere devotee. Krishna said that he was so pleased with them uh, for abandoning all worldly things for him. Even when he disappeared, he never stopped loving them. He said that he can never pay off the debt of spotless service, even within the lifetime of Brahma. So Prabhupada mentions that Krishna is revealing his heart to his devotees. Krishna is showing that the love of his devotee is so priceless to him that even a lifetime of Brahma is not enough to repay the love of his devotees. Krishna and the gopis dance to the heart's content. Prabhupada calls this a circular dance. Krishna was dancing with each of the gopis and he was also playing his flute in the middle of, of the circle and singing with each of the gopis. In this way, they danced the entire night. So to repay the gopis, Krishna made the length of that night the length of one night of Brahma, which is 4.3 million of our billion. years, billion of our years. So you just, as you can see in the picture, Krishna is with each gopi dancing uh, as to how the gopi uh, decides to dance with Krishna. And uh, Krishna extended the night of the Ras dance to cover a great period of time, which lasted millions and millions of years, but the gopis could not understand that. How is this possible? Krishna could show his mother the whole universe within his mouth. So lesson to be learned is Krishna could do anything for the pleasure of his devotees because he's the supreme controller. Most of the gopis in the previous lives were great sages, expert in the studies of the Vedas. And that Krishna appeared as Lord Ramchandra, they wanted to enjoy with him. Lord Ramchandra gave them the benediction that their desires would be fulfilled when he would appear as Krishna. Therefore, the desire of the gopis to enjoy the appearance of Lord Krishna was long cherished. When the night ended, Krishna sent them all home. Yogama allowed the families of the gopis to think that the gopis had been at home all this time. Even the gopis forgot about the night. Krishna had put a night of Brahma into a night of the human beings. <laughs> so all the residents were still there in the morning. This is Krishna's inconceivable potency. The Ras Leela represents unmotivated, uninterrupted, pure loving service to Krishna. The gopis have been worshipping Godesh Katyanini for a whole month because they wanted Krishna as a husband. And Krishna fulfilled this desire to some extent at, at Chirghat uh, by stealing some of the gopis' clothes. And some of the things that happened in Vrindavan on this day is in Banki Bihari temple, this is the only day that Banki Bihari actually holds a flute. The deities of some of the other temples are brought out into a garden and devotees sing bhajans all night and offer milk sweets to the, these deities. Sharad Punima ki yeah. jai. So Janaki, um, 
uh, would you like to share any pastimes? Um, yeah, it was really nice today to hear the class. Um, it was really, really good. Um, I think I just, I just want to uh, share how, um, I mean, uh, Radha Govind Swami, His Holiness Radha Govind Swami, he speaks on this, just this Gopi Geet, maybe for 14 days, 21 days, and and it, 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 there's so much to it that just this Gopi Geet itself, mm -hmm. I think when he was talking about this Leela, it took him, you know, three subtas just to, I think, even begin to get into it. <laughs> three full subtas, and that's evening, morning, both lectures. So he was talking four hours a day just because there's so much nectar in mm -hmm. in this like pastime of Sherad Purnima. And um, I've listened to the, um, like that lecture series, and I think I just recommend it to everyone. It's just so much like, um, you know, it goes into every like word of the Gopi Gita and what it means because. I, I just like to share that when I began to research Gopi Geet and I first read the Gopi Geet translation because I'm not like a Sanskrit expert. When I read it, I really was confused because I think if you don't read the translation with guidance, it can be very confusing to read the Gopi Geet. Um, and the moment I began to hear the lectures which dissected all the meaning and the commentaries of what our Ajayas had said, that was when the nectar really began to flow for me. Um, and I was so confused reading it because I think even though, you know, we come, we're from like, um, you know, a background where we've been reading these books still, when I read this translation, I just couldn't understand the pastime. It was completely beyond my imagination, you know, and understanding. And then the more you begin to read it, the more you understand. And, I'd just like to share what Radha Govind Swami says is the four main prayers of the Gopis in this Gopi Geet. Um, mm. If we've got time, it'll just take a second. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, the first prayer that the Gopis say is that they want to see Krishna's lotus face. That's, that's the first thing which they um, request um, as their prayer. Um, and that comes in one of the verses. Um, I think it's right at the beginning. Then the second prayer is that they want the nectar of Krishna's lips. They want the Adharamrit. That's the, the second main prayer that comes in this Gopi Geet. Um, the third main prayer um, is, I'm sorry, one second. I've just, <laughs> I've had a mind blank. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, every day, every minute. Rather. <laughs> um, I just had a complete mind blank. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, they want so they want to see him. That's one of them. They want the they want the next. Yes, yeah, the text number twelve says uh, yeah. about his lotus face. So yeah, yeah. his yeah. feet and uh, and his, his um, lips. Oh, sorry, it's come back to me. And then the third one is that they want Krishna's lotus hand on their heads. Please place your hand on our heads. That's their third main prayer, um, which comes um, in the Gopi Geet. So they want to see him. They want to have the nectar of his lips. They want his lotus hand on their heads. And the fourth prayer is that they want the lotus feet of Krishna on their chest. Yeah. Mm. And that's that, and he splits it into these four main prayers. He says, this is the four main things the Gopis are requesting. And I can't even begin to do justice to everything he said, but the thing that really struck me is he says, why do they ask for this? And he goes, the reason is that when Krishna disappeared dark into the night's forest, um, they were so worried about him and his feet because he walks barefoot in Vrindavan. They were so worried because, you know, so many things had happened in Vrindavan at night with the demons and all these things. They were so worried about Krishna that they wanted and so worried about his feet and his, his lotus feet getting hurt, you know, in the middle of the night where he wouldn't be able to see what he's stepping on. That, that's why they offered their, their chest as a resting place for his lotus feet. Mm. Um, so... He Radha Govind Swami explains in all of this, they never thought about themselves. They were always mm. concerned about what Krishna wanted and how they could make him okay, how they could keep him safe, how they could keep him happy. And 
one of the reasons that they're crying and they're saying all of these things is not because they want him to come for them. They want him to come back so that they can make sure he's safe and, you know, not alone in the dark night. So what His Holiness Brother Govind Swami explains is this whole Gopi, it seems as if it's about the Gopis and what they want, but it all comes down to Krishna and keeping him safe and happy and well. And it's it's the most selfless prayer, really, that they make. And it's um, it's kind of like how, you know, sometimes when we want... Um, when we we want someone to come back we we actually want them to come back because we're worried that they're out until late but we we say oh you know i need to go out you need to come home because i need to go out somewhere but really inside you is nothing but the wish that you want them to come back to make sure that they're not alone out in the out in the night so it's um it's a very like it's a very secret um prayer and um rather govin swami explains it's like it's like a lover's code. We can't understand this Gopi Geet because lovers have codes between them that you know they speak in, um, which only they know. And so the true meaning of the Gopi Geet, only Krishna and the Gopis know. How can we even, you know, begin to understand? But this is just what the main point that comes is the selflessness of the Gopis and how none of this was about them. It was always about Krishna. So just a little bit. Sharing that was really mm. good. Well done. <laughs> Very good. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, there's also a conversation between uh, Satyavata Muni and Narad Muni. So it's two great souls are actually also tasting this nectar and sharing it through the Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. So actually, we're yeah. very, very, very fortunate to have this uh, incredible, incredible prayer available to us. And as you said, to really learn the secret, we need to... Um, learn it from a devotee who knows the secret yeah exactly thank you, um yeah <laughs> thank you for letting me share something that i'd heard from from maraj <laughs> yeah thank that's you. very good very good um anil are you there is he there yeah yeah yes probably ah, good. Thank you, sir. now okay. usually you have a question and usually it's a question which everybody else is dying to ask. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you do ask it. <laughs> do you have a question? <laughs> uh, no, Prabhuji, everything is uh, is clear. And um, I'm able to, like initially I had those, uh, I, I had those questions uh, because my focus was on different uh, like uh, gods and demigods and all those things. So I got a good understanding about how Krishna and uh, the other gods, the demigods are, are connected or like uh, Vishnu being the form, extended form of Krishna. So I'm learning those things. And uh, today is like, uh, I'm able to understand things in a better way. Okay. And I think, is it tomorrow? We're going to address that point about why is Krishna the Supreme hmm. Lord? One of these seminars is, tomorrow, one, of, yeah. is, is one of those, um, is where we, we we try. Uh, I mean, we're not going to do a great job, but uh, we try to establish the position of Krishna as supreme, and then it makes it a little bit easier to understand these pastimes, because they're not ordinary pastimes. They are special pastimes which take place between him and his special devotees to enhance their enjoyment uh, of their relationship with, with each other. So, very very good. Thank you. Anybody else? Any questions? Sunita, have you got any questions? Um, just some Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Yeah, Sunita. yeah just something I spotted, like um, uh, uh, this love that we'll never understand, um, you know, with Krishna and the Gopis. I'm just, a thought came to my head back in the 60s, sort of like, um, not, not necessarily George Harrison time, but um, well, no, that, his time, but not involving him. But, you know, like the 60s movement, this love and peace, I think it was mm. mis to being lost that's the way i've seen it that's right um, um so it can be you can see how that's uh, i sort of under, it just came to me now i understood um it's sort of like i'm thinking oh maybe that's how that movement became misunderstood because of um they probably read about you know about the um the love and peace sort of thing with krishna and the gopis and um yeah, yeah you're right it, actually actually it was um, badly misunderstood in in Bharat, in India itself. Hello, film. <laughs> yeah, Hare Rama, you know, Hare Krishna. that was one aspect. Yes. But even for all of that, because, you know, the, there was some 
practitioners who were thinking, oh, if Krishna can do this, then we can do this as well. And we still be religious. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and that practice, uh, what is it called? Um, Sahajya. It's pretending to be like Krishna. And uh, you, you are, you know, like um, doing activities which we are actually not allowed to do, uh, but which Krishna does do because he's a supreme personality of God and he can do anything to please his devotees. Yeah, sure. Um, so that, in that sense, that was already there in India a long time. And then, as you said, it, it became even more perverted in the West. And, in the uh, West, exactly. And there was drugs as well involved. Yeah, so it yeah. uh, really got misunderstood. And yeah. uh, would you believe it? Srila Prabhupada went in the middle of that very counterculture, in the middle of that, the, yeah, the essence the of where it was taking place. He went there. And right. tried to Without any money, without any people. <laughs> and he went to teach them, yeah. Teach well, yeah, he, he did the most thing. And he, he did, he taught them and wow. he, he changed their hearts. Yeah. He changed their way of doing things into Krishna conscious ways. And they helped him build this movement. Mm. The most fascinating, you know, how he did that was the most incredible uh, selfless act, of, like the gopis. Very much like the gopis, completely selfless. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because he went there with no money or anything. Um, <clears throat> painless. And, and a cold place. If he went to New York, it'd be cold as well. Very cold. When he came <laughs> out, it was snowing one time. He thought everybody had painted um, the streets white. <laughs> <laughs> it was snow. First time he's seen snow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting. But thank you for these presentations. They're, they're amazing. Thank you. Thank you for participating. It's very kind of you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. Uh, Anil, did you have you got your hand up, Anil? <laughs> yes, Prabhuji. Uh, oh. Prabhuji, when you when you started the class, then then like we were going through different names, and then I got lost in the in the track of those names, like who they exactly are. Yeah. Uh, like if you have time and in a very, very brief way, uh, if you are able to tell like Nimai, Lord ah, Gauranga. Yes, Ketya, sorry. Very Ketya. good point. Very good point. I should stick to one name. That's the mm -hmm. same person. Nimai is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is the incarnation who took birth in uh, uh, West Bengal in 1486. His name is also Gauranga. Gauranga is golden form. Okay. And Chaitanya is another name for him. His, his mother and father gave him the name of Nimai. Um, and also Vishwambar. They gave him the name of Vishwambar as well. <laughs> Vishwambar means universe, control of the universe. Um, he also has, Yes. And you, you said also about the Mahaprabhu. So we are referring same, to... Same person. Okay. We must actually... Uh, sorry, I must do that. I must standardize the names into one name. <laughs> I, I and, actually like the name of Gauranga, but when I'm copying and pasting, um, I don't always check um, that all the names are the same. So. No, we are like, uh, I'm learning too, so, <laughs> so, so it's, it's fine. It's, it's good to know so many names. That's nice. And <laughs> Nityananda is the same person? No, Nityananda is his um, first incarnation. He's Balaram in the yeah. past name of Krishna. Yeah. So Nityananda is different from Chaitanya. Okay. They're, they're, they're not brothers in this pastime, but they're like brothers. Um, okay. um, they're very together, so together, you could not distinguish their thought process because they are so in sync with each other. Uh, even though they're two separate personalities of Godhead, of course they're one, uh, but they've come in different moods. But in this Chaitanya Leela, their mood was completely synchronized how to help the um, conditioned souls in this world. Balaram, if you remember Balaram, right? Yeah, yeah. He was offended when somebody didn't stand up. He walked into a class. Somebody was giving class to 88,000 sages. The speaker did not rise, right? <laughs> and Balaram killed him. <laughs> oh, oh. He had no, he, he, no compassion. Well, he had compassion. That was compassion, <laughs> but he didn't tolerate the mistake. Nityananda 
He's the same Balaram. Mm -hmm. And Nityananda was hit on the head with, uh, by, uh, clay pot. with a clay pot and blood was drawn by um, Jagayan, Jagayan Madai. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came on the scene and said, I will kill this person who has hit you. And Nityananda said, no, you can't do that. You can't do that because you have to kill everybody. They're all like this. So you see in one scenario, Balaram, the fellow didn't get up, he killed him. In this scenario, he had so much compassion, the same Balaram with added compassion said to Chaitanya, no, you have to save them, not kill them, even though he was hit on the head by this fellow. These are all Leela, of course. Nobody can hurt uh, Nityananda, but this is just wonderful pastimes that we can remember and relish. So I, I bought the Mridanga from the local uh, ISKCON temple. Wow. And, and they explained me that this is Balram. Yes. And you have to, you have to keep it well. Uh, so <laughs> that's how I remember that. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, everything expands as Balram. Mm. When Krishna comes, the land, the pastures, everything is actually expansion of Balaram. He, he doesn't let anybody do any service. You have to beg him, please, Lord Balaram, let me in, be engaged in the service. Let me be engaged in your service to serve Krishna. Balaram, if we get Balaram's mercy, Nityananda's mercy, Chaitanya is for the taking. Because yeah. Balaram is the regional guru, actually. He's a position of guru. Mm. So you need to approach the guru first to, mm. before you can approach Krishna. Mm. Mm. Very, very merciful mm. and kind. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, thank you for asking. Uh, sorry about the names. Please point out where <laughs> we can improve because uh, these things are, you know, we, we're just learning. <laughs> thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Any comments? Any questions? So we can do Damodar Aarti. It's uh, getting quite late and I'll be pushed for the kiddies later. Uh, <laughs> so if devotees have, oh, okay, how are we going to do this? I'm going to point this to you. I don't have any words on that one. So you need to look at this. Okay, so um, I tell you the words are here. So let me get the words up. I hope, and now who's going to sing Damodar Aarti? Who'd like to sing? Any volunteers to sing the Lama Dharati? You must have sung it before. Yeah. Prabhu, Chitra can sing? Chitra can sing? Wow. Jay Chitra. Let me just get it up. Everyone can get their um, ghee lamps ready. Okay. And I am. Where are you? <laughs> Oh, here is okay. Now we'll have the words here. Okay, you're in, and that you can point there so you can join with the audio. I'll show you how to do that. I can do that actually. Uh, sorry, any worries. Can you see the words? Yes, Prabhu. Okay, great, great. So she can start whenever she's ready. Okay, Prabhu. And we will... We'll just... Uh... Play the video. Okay. Get a screen connected to Namada here. Then you can all offer. Yeah, well Okay. Okay, Karuna. Okay, Madhaji. Okay, I can start. Namisharam Sachitananda Rupam. 
ಲಸಕುಂದಾಲಂ ಗೋಕುಲೆ ಬ್ರಜಮಾರ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಪ್ರಭು 
Thank you for joining us. Would you like to read this prayer? And you can share some pastimes if you like. Thank you, Prabhuji. Would Would you like me to read the translation? Yeah, you can read the translations. And, you know, like, if you, you want to share a few things, please don't feel free. Huh? You're sure. a wonderful preacher. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning from you. And Mataji, of course. <laughs> <laughs> She's the one, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, sure. Hare Krishna, everyone. My Hare. point is, uh, I was away, so I could not join on time. I joined a bit late. But uh, it, was, it was really nice. Uh, thank you for singing, Damodar Ashtakam. I was actually, I called my son, and he was doing the Mridanga in the oh. mall. Wow. On Damodar Ashtakam. And mm. he's, he's learning, and I'm learning from him. And he's in lessons. So when <laughs> I mentioned that uh, he recently bought the Mirdanga and so right that Mirdanga is the further expansion of Lord Balram. Uh -huh. mm. And I can switch on my camera as well, maybe. Yes, do that. Do that. Prabhuji, Prabhuji likes that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Ah, very good. Look at this fellow. He's a handsome boy. <laughs> they have to look at my face all the time. See? <laughs> love, love that from you. So, yes, it's, it's such a nice pastime. And uh, I've spent, I was uh, blessed that I spent a lot of time in my childhood in Vrindavan. And... Oh, wow. uh, my my mamaji uh, my mother's elder brother he was there and his cousins are there wow in there they they still have a goshala there and they have cows not as many as they used to have but they still got few and during this time the mood in vrindavan is so intense, I will say. And that's why it says, I could, I could understand, I could relate myself in there. And I've spent some time uh, in Krishna Balram temple, in, in Iskorn temple in Vindavan. And just the sight of it. If you haven't been to, of course you could go to Manor, Bhaktivedant Manor temple. But Vrindavan, well, the virtual, Parakrama is also happening if you're not part of that group, which is Sutapa Prabhuji is leading. But just the sight of it, just the, if, if I just think myself, if I take myself back in that temple, the devotees, they are so full of, I mean, it's a mercy to be in association with devotees. They're handing over. They don't expect anything in back. They're just handing over those small lamps Fill with oil. This is a go. Take it. And as many as want. Well. Like I was there and I'm, I'm doing and I, I, I completed it. I want to do it more. I came back. Mother could have a, another more. Please, Prabhu, take it. And you, the lights, they kind of switch off. And in the whole temple, what you see with everybody, with Tutulsi Maharani, and that's what we do at home as well. This pastime, and of course, we could go a lot in detail, like it, it's been given in Bhagavatam, how this particular... Uh, sorry, going through. we're going to do um, oh, nine okay. seminars on this pastime. Hurry, uh, Every weekend uh, from 3.30 to 4.30. Yes. We'll, so we're going to spend at least seven hours on this pastime. Wow. wow. Of course, that's it's, nothing. It's, 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 yes, and it, it's, a, it's a nectar. It's a nectar, Prabhuji. I would, I would love to hear, Prabhuji. It, it, as, as you said, it, it's... We, we could share so much on it. Of course, on Damodar Ashtakam, the way we say the, the meaning of Damodar, that's, that's one, of, one of the things always stays with me. So uh, as we will go along, Prabhuji, if, uh, if uh, you, you would give me the service, I would love to share. But, uh, but well, please. About 10 minutes. You, you've got about 10 minutes. Hari Thank you. So the best thing about Damodar Ashtakam, Hopefully, we all know the story of Damodar, why Krishna is called Damodar. If not, then I'm sure or in coming seminars, we are going to go for it. 
It's very, remember, we just completed Pushottam month and we have to wait for three years for Pushottam month to come back. But Karthik, I mean, it's a blessing of the, it's a mercy of the Lord that we got Karthik month. And that's another reason we say that we cannot, like what Mataji was saying, that we cannot approach the Lord without the teacher, Balramji. Right. We need a spiritual master who could guide us to Krishna. Similar way, Karthik month itself, we, if we haven't covered it, it's worth, I hope we will, we will have at least some time on, on the meaning of the word itself, Karthik. Why do we say? And the way usually I go, I raise the questions, I never provide the answers. So. It intrigues everyone. Oh, I want to know it more. I want to come on the next seminar as well, right? So the meaning of Karthik month, that itself is so intriguing. Why? And this, this month belongs to, so Purushottam month, chapter 15 in Bhagavad Gita, that belongs to Krishna himself, Purushottam, right? And Karthik month belongs to Radharani. Now Purushottam month comes once in three years. But Karthik, Radharani, and without the mercy of Radharani, we cannot go to the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. So this is the blessing of Radharani that every year we get Karthik. And the best use of Karthik we can make is through the association. We got to have the association. If you are in the association like Prabhuji, Mataji, I would say we can't go wrong because they are there for us to guide, right? They, they guide us. We just need to be there. Like another Prabhuji, I was talking in the morning that we just need to be in the association of devotees. Even if we will go a bit off, they're always there to bring us back on the track, right? They always remind us that we need to be focused on the ultimate aim and in Damodar, the way, of course, there's such a melody in Damodar Ashtkam as well. Just, just, just hearing it, even if those, I don't know how, well, I'm, I'm not, I don't understand Sanskrit a lot. But even if you don't, you just hear that melody, right? Of course, if you can understand the meaning behind the words, it's more. When, when you are listening to it, you just get immersed in that. And you think, wow. And if you close, well, this, this is the way I usually do. While I'm listening, I, if I understand the true meaning of it, I close my eyes, I reach myself there. And sometimes, like way back, I was in Middle East, Damodar Desh. So Dubai itself is called Damodar Desh. And we were doing, I attended another seminar yesterday from Damodar Desh, and they are going to do 8,000 homes. And I, I will invite, I'm, I'm still, I need to uh, get the date confirmed. I, I would like to invite everyone to our residence as well. Please come along, bless us, and we invite our friends and families. And this is another thing we need to do. What Damodar Desh is doing, they are visiting 8,000. That's the plan. That's what they did in Pushottam month, and they are hoping to exceed it this month. Try to bring the mercy of the Lord in everyone's home. And this is this is one of the best things in Damodar month. You could, you could go, you could... All other, there are many other reasons, excuses to bring uh, Krishna back in your home. But Kartik Damodar month is the best. You, I, I, I request everyone, please, if you haven't booked a date already, go along. And please, like I was, I, I met some friends this afternoon, I invited them and I encouraged them, please come along, you need to. And, whether they do or not, that's a different thing. Remember the whole essence of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, you need to do your prescribed duty. You do your karma, nishkam karma yoga without expecting anything back in return. So what we can do, we can always ask. We can all, whether others will do or not. So everyone here, I can see 19 here, 19 participants today. So at least 17 of us could go out, include myself, 18 of us could go out and if we will multiply, remember, if we got that, we would love to share that with others, right? And this is what you will do. Well, I would do the same. If I will find 
a lot of gold. First of all, I will bring it for myself. I'm very greedy, right? After that, I will give it to my immediate family. Then I will give it to my extended relationship. But after that, what I will do, I will share with everyone, everyone. And this is the Lord's mercy. I got it. I'm so happy. Satya Chit Anand, right? And I know there are so many souls there dressed up in Halloween today. I would like to give this mercy to them, this mercy of the Lord, which is available. They are not aware of it. So with Damodar Raj to come, I would say, again, we will go into, but thank you so much, Prabhuji. Thank to, you. Uh, just thank for my you. purification. Thank you so much. I will so like- Every day we are doing satsangs, different homes, uh, 7.30 uh, till 8.30. And what we are planning is, uh, and I hope everybody can join, we will um, do a little bhajan, recite the 15th, uh, sorry, 12th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, and then uh, explain the significance of Damodar month. Yes. And then we were going to go through the Krishna book from beginning uh, until yes. the end. So that's uh, why I hope you can join. Uh, and that's, we're going to do in a picture format, mm -hmm. going through uh, what Prabhupada has given. And then we'll do the Damodar Arti and then the Shinga protection prayers. Very nice. Very nice. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Sharing. And I'd like you to come along and speak as well, because, uh, you know, you got this enthusiasm, which is very uh, addictive. <laughs> So thank you. You can read thank the prayer, the translation you can read? Sure, Prabhuji. Yes. Let me bring my chat down. So the translation of the very first verse, to the Supreme Lord, whose form is the embodiment of eternal existence, knowledge and bliss. So the way we said Satta Chitananda, whose shark shaped earrings are swinging to and fro, who is beautifully shining in the divine realm of Gokula, who I, due to the offense of breaking the pot of yogurt, that his mother was churning into butter and then stealing the butter that was kept hanging from a sewing, is quickly running from the wooden grinding mortar in fear of Mother Yashoda. But who has been caught from behind by her? Who ran after him with greater speed to that Supreme Lord, Shri Damodar? I offer my humble obeisances. Would like me to continue, Prabhuji, for the yeah. second? Oh, oh, no, you're right, actually. It's always nice to involve it's, us. Yeah, yes, thank you. Please. Thank you very much. Yeah? Thank you so much, Govind Prabhu. Huh? Thank you. Um, Induleka Maji, would you like to read one? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Um, yes. Like to read number two? Yeah. Um, number two, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Seeing the whipping stick in his mother's hands, he's crying and rubbing his eyes again and again with his two lotus hands. His eyes are filled with fear and the necklace of pearls around his neck, which is marked with three lines like a conch shell, is shaking because of his quick breathing due to crying. To the Supreme Lord, Sri Damodara, whose belly is bound, not with ropes, but with his mother's pure love, I offer my humble obeisances. Wonderful. Uh, Aruna? Yes, I will try. Okay. <laughs> um, um, number three, yeah. By such child, child, childhood pastimes as this, he is drowning the inhabitants of Gokul in pools of ecstasy and in revealing to those devotee who, devotees who are observed in knowledge of his supreme ma majesty, the opulence that he is only conquered by devotees, who, devotees whose pure love is in, in, in bush, Imbued. 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 with the intimacy and is free from all conceptions of, of the reverence with great love i again offer my obeisances to lord damodar hundreds and hundreds of times thank you thank you uh what is it in Hare Krishna. great great yeah, you, you can read all of them you can read uh, from four onwards huh? four onwards yeah O Lord, although you are able to give all kinds of benedictions 
I do not pray to you for the boon of impersonal liberation, nor the highest liberation of eternal life in Vaikuntha, nor any other boons which may be obtained by executing the nine process of bhakti. O oh Lord, I simply wish that this form of yours as Bal Gopal in Vrindavan may ever be manifest in my heart. For what is the use to me of any other boon besides this? Okay. Oops. Oh Lord, your lotus face, which is encircled by locks of soft black hair tinged with red, is kissed again and again by Mother Yasoda, and your lips are reddish like the bimba fruit. May this beautiful vision of your lotus face be ever manifest in my heart. Thousands and thousands of other benedictions are of no use to me. O Supreme Godhead, I offer my obeisances unto you. O Damodar, O Ananta, O Vishnu, O Master, O my Lord, be pleased upon me by showering your glance of mercy upon me. Deliver this poor ignorant fool who is immersed in an ocean of worldly sorrows and become visible to my eyes. O Lord Damodar, just as the two sons of Kuvera, Managriv and Nalakuvera, were delivered from the curse of Narad and made into great devotees by you in your form as a baby tied with rope to a wooden grinding mortar. In the same way, please give to me your own prema bhakti. I only long for this end, have no desire for any kind of liberation. O oh Lord Damodar, I first of all offer my obeisances to the brilliantly effulgent rope which binds your belly. I then offer my obeisances to your belly, which is the abode of the entire universe. I humbly bow down to your most beloved Srimati Radharani, and I offer all obeisances to you, the Supreme Lord, who deploys unlimited pastimes. The remarks and extra information. This song was originally spoken by Satyavrata Muni in a conversation with Narad Muni and Sonakrishi. The song is sung during the month of Kartik, also known as the month of Damodar, as quoted in the Sri Hari Bhakti Vilas. In the month of Kartik, one should worship Lord Damodar and daily recite the prayer known as Dhamma which has been spoken by the sage Satyavrat and which attracts Lord Dhamma, Sri Hari Bhakti Vilas 2.16.198. Jai Dhamma Ki Jai. Thank you. Any uh, jokes of nectar you'd like to share, uh, Madhusan Prabhu? Um, Sorry, I, I'll put my video on to get see, yeah. And it's it's wonderful, you know, to go through this month of Kartik every year. You know, been doing it for so many years and uh, it's the best best part of the whole year because you're involved in offering key lamp morning, evening, then you're singing this prayer of Dhamma Rastakam and uh, you gradually start to learn the words and the uh, the prayers and offerings, you know, and it's it's just wonderful uh, the whole month and the whole Kartik month. I've never spent a whole Kartik month in Vrindavan, but I would love to one day. Um, I've been invited so many times by my cousin, you know, Trikali Ye, who lives there. And as, uh, what, what's the name, Govind, Govind Prabhu? Yes. Mm. Yeah, as he was so enthusiastically describing the pastimes, and I know I've got very good links with Damodar Desh in Dubai. And uh, Walla Prabhu there, you know, he runs the whole show of uh, uh, Krishna consciousness in, in Dubai. And they're very close. And his son stayed with us for a while. And, uh, you know, they sing beautiful family. And they sing wonderfully. And, but actually, years ago in 19... 
96, something like that. I went to Dubai and I met his grandfather. He's the first pioneer of Krishna consciousness in Dubai. And uh, actually, one of the devotees from Dubai bought a Srimad Bhagavatam set from us in Coventry. He came on a training here and visited us and he had some prasad with us at home. He wanted some association of devotees and uh, he, he rang us. And then, uh, he, you know, he, he actually wanted, he said, we haven't got any books. We're not allowed any any books at all in Dubai. He said, but I'd like to take Srimad Bhagavatam set, but I don't know whether I'll be able to get it through the customs or not. But I said, no, Krishna will let you somehow, you know, you take it. So he bought a set from us and he took it and he managed to actually get it through the customs. And then when he got to Dubai, then I visited him. When I visited him in Dubai in those years, he took me around. He met his, uh, the grandfather of, uh, of the father of Walla Prabhu. And uh, he was actually trying to encourage everybody into Krishna consciousness at that time. And I gave a class in that temple in uh, Dubai on Friday, because they used to gather together on every Friday, Krishna consciousness. And that Dubai is now called a Damodar Desh. You know, and then it's amazing how Prabhupada, okay. the impact of Prabhupada, you know, and, and it, by the way, you know, Bahrain is also um, given another name actually because Bahrain, the king of Bahrain actually visits the temple as well and Jai Pataka Swami um, has preached a lot you know in, in Bahrain as well um, and it's called Balram Desh you know mm -hmm. and uh, it's amazing um, so you know when I when I, when I um, went to Dubai and, and uh, this Srimad Bhagavatam set that this devotee took from us Actually, they made photocopies of it and kept distributing to everyone. And from those photocopies, people learned so many verses. And I was amazed that, you know, they were actually making copies of the, um, <laughs> the whole set and uh, the verses. And I, <laughs> it's amazing how they did it, you know, but that's the impact of Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, okay. uh, well, they, you know, is it? <laughs> go and say, well, Prabhu is his uh, Shiksha Guru. Well, he's an amazing, enthusiastic person. He works for the Emirates, you know, I know him very well. Uh, and it's amazing. So, you know, and the, today I was listening to Damodar Katha, and then somewhere in Vrindavan, there is the mortar and the pestle that they, that the, the Krishna was tied to. And that is, uh, it's amazing to listen to that, that pastimes. Um, of how Krishna was tied to the mortar and then he delivers, you know, we'll learn more and more about as we go through the pastime. So you'll be going through that anyway. Mm -hmm. But it's wonderful, you know. And, and, um, I would, okay, thank you. Well, thank you for sharing, especially this point about the Bhagavatam. I really liked it because we're going through it and we see the power of it, you know. It's uh, really nice that you shared that. Uh -huh. Yeah, actually, you wouldn't believe it, you know, because uh, here. Yeah, actually, uh, we've got to go. This is this this is the this is this whole photocopied Srimad Bhagavatam copies. You know, I was given a copy of it, the verses, the most important verses. Nice one, nice one. How they used to distribute it. <laughs> Amazing. Very good. Anyway, thank you very much for oh, thank you. a thank wonderful you. and. And I really want to thank Karuna Panda because uh, Amazing. she Amazing. sang that uh, Gopi Geet and it's been my favorite for years, you know. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, Govinda Prabhu says that we met them in Chennai, apparently, the message was. So I'm just saying to my husband, say, yes, we probably did, did meet them in Chennai. Oh, <laughs> did, did you? we so, met so. in Chennai. Okay. Well, yeah, we went to the wedding of Walla Prabhu's son. Right, right. In Chennai, and we were invited to go there, and uh, that was a wedding. So we might have met him actually. I, okay. So. I so I oh yeah, of course, Govind Prabhu. Yeah, I, I saw your picture, Hari Bol Prabhu. Nice okay. to see you again. <laughs> hey, thank you very much. I, I would like to finish off with uh, Nishinga prayers because at six yeah. o'clock we're starting the kids' class. So Karuna. Okay. Thank you, Hari Bol. Thank you very much. Thank you. Karuna, uh, the coverage.
can we do this coverage real fast? How, okay, how fast have you done it? <laughs> uh, I get my copy. <laughs> get your copy. And in the meantime, we can do once in a single press. Now we want to chant for Ketan. We want to chant for Tunga Vidya. She's got the water in the lungs. We want to chant for Maharajis, uh, the two Maharajis, Kazamakan and one more Bhakti Madhav, I think. Indulekha Maharaji, what's name? Bhakti? I forgot Prabhuji. And I, I said, <laughs> Maduriya, Maduriya. Anyway, we would like to pray for all of them. So we can do Namaste Nashinga together, and then very quickly we can do the Nashinga prayers. Namaste Nashinga, Pradala Dadaini, Ranya Kasi Purtaya, Ilatanka Nakayali, Ito Nashinga, Parato Nashinga, Yato Yato Yamita To Nashinga. Bahe na singa, he da e na singa, na singa madim charanam prapane. Tavakara kamala vare na kam madhuta singa, dalita hiranyakashipu danu bringam. Keshavadrita narahari dupa, jay jagadisha hari, jay jagadisha hari. Jai Jagadish. Nishing Dev Bhagwan ki jai. Prad ki jai. Okay, Maaji. Okay. Shri Rashmi Nishing Dev ki jai. Prad Maharaj ki jai. Shri Bhagwan ki jai. Nari Shingha Kaka Chambakshe. Pralade Nari Gampura. Sarva Raksha Karam Bhumyam. Sarva Padrava Nashanam. Sarva Sampat Karam Chaiva. Sarva Moksha Pradayakam. Yadva nourishing ham devisham, famous in Parthanestika. Vibrita siam trinayanam, shared in Dushava Prabha. Lakshmialing it a bamangam, bibuti biru pashitam. Chaturbujam komalangam, sonna kundaras shobitam. Shriasu shobito ras kamaratna ki gura mutritam. After Kanchina shankasham, pita nirmala vasatam. Nandradi sura morishta sura mali kedi kedi. Virajita padadam bam shanka chakadi hitibi. Garut Matacha Vinayats to Yamana Mudan Vitam. Sorry, the Kamara Sambas and Pritiba to Kavachampate. Nursing home, she rubba to look at Rekshata Sambaba. Sarva go peace, Sambaba, Sapalum, made a shatuzani. Nursing home, made a shopa to Soma Sunani Rochana. Sritam Mipatu, Nerahari, Muni Varias to Titria. Nasam Missim Hanashas to Mukam Lakshmi Mukhatria. Sarva Vidya di Papa to Nursing Horas and Amama. Vakdram Padvindu Vadanam Sada Paranada Vandita Narashing Hapatu make and thumbs can go over an antiquary. Devia Sasho Bita Buja Narashing Hapatu may push out. Karama Deva Varado Narasing Hapatu Sarvata Vidayam Yogi Sagyasta Niva Sampatu may very Madhyam Patu Hiraniyaksh Baksha Kukshi Vidarana Nabi may patu Narahari Sunabi Brahma Samstata Brahma the Kota Yaka Yam Yasa Sopatu make a tip. Guriam me patu guriana mantra rambuya rupaji. Urumanu bhava patu janu ninara rupaji. Jange patu dharabhara hatha yusam nikishari. Sura raja prada patu pado me nera hishara. Sahasha shisha purusha patu me sarva sastanu. Mahograha purvata patu maha vira grajonita. Maha vishnu dakshinetu maha jalas to nerita. Pashime patu serve shoti she may serve a tomuka, nourishing her patu by Abyam Sumyam Vishana Vigraha, Shanyam patu padro may serve a mangala dayaka, Samsara bayata patu, mithyo mithyo nikeshari, idam nourishing ham kapacham prahara, the mukamanditam, but imanya pati, nikam serve a pape pramuchati, Utravan tenavan no gay dinga, Yurupajayati, yam yam kama yati, kamam tam tam prapto, tiasam shayam. Sarvatra jayam up noti, Sarvatra vijayi palit, whom yam deliksha diyanam, rahanam, vini varanam, Vishikaroga samputa, vishapa haranam param, Lamhara shasa yakshanam, duro sarana karanam, Pujeva tala patreva kavacham nikitam shupam karmu eti yamena, sidye yu karma sidyaya, Deva shurman who say shoes of some eva jayam rabbit, Akers and yam tris and yamba, yapa, tenia tonara. 
सर्वंगल मंगल भुक्ति मुक्ति विंदति ृषिहरियाणमाचरेक्षुकुक्षिभवोक्शो भव मनुष्याचिंतीयुतपतनमेपूरयाणे प्रहलादोक्त शशि लक्ष्मी नशिनी देव की जय महाराज महाराज की जय शब पाल की जय गुरु महाराज की जय हरे कृष्णा हरे ना बंदार की जय दैट वाज इनक्रेडिबल इवन दो इट वाज फास्ट दैट वाज सो स्वीट एज़ वेल सो वेल डन माता जी यू आर अमेजिंग थैंक यू शब थैंक यू टू ऑल द डिवोटीज प्लीज जॉइन अस टुमारो एट 3:30 यूके जीएमटी um पीएम एंड वी आर गोइंग टू गो थ्रू exactly what govind prabhu said why damodar um, and uh, the reason for kartik uh, i love his points and also why krishna who is krishna in the first place so just get that basic uh, grounding into our uh, mindset and then we will do the damodar prayer uh, past times in the following weekends Thank you so much. So it's been a long session, and I really appreciate all the devotees staying. We won't be able to chant the one round. We've got a uh, a few children coming on board now, so that we we we're doing some um, some damuda lila with them as well. So thank you so so much. Okay, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare